Hello, ladies and gentlemen. They say imitation is the greatest form of flattery, and it is no less true than when the Church of England decides to imitate politicians. Mr. Clegg is the politician that the Church is imitating. He promised a lot for the youth of this country, but he did not keep his promise. He went back on his promise. He betrayed the people of England, and the young people especially. From that time, anyone betraying children and young people in England today are said to be doing a Cleggy. In 2009, the church proposed a new move, which was called Going for Growth, and it was a way of improving the support of the church to young people, and additional support to the existing work that was being done nationally. In 2010, the General Synod were told about it, and they gave Going for Growth its unanimous support. Work with young people was, of course, still going on. And in 2010, in Sheffield, a great gathering of clergy and young people was held, and Rowan Williams went there to give his support. Mr. Catholic reported about it at the time. The Archbishop of Canterbury and the other clergy met with the young people. They smiled with the young people, and they shook hands with the young people, and they ingratiated themselves with the young people. The young people were listened to, and they grew to trust the clergy and believe the promises to do better and to be committed to them. Everyone was pleased, and the church boasted about its ability to consult. Videos were made about their consultation, and a great fanfare of tweets and Facebooking went on. But instead of keeping these promises to our young people, the Archbishops of Canterbury and York are presiding over a church that has decided instead to take money away from this work and cut the two most important national posts in youth and children's work. And they've done this with minimal consultation. In law, they have to consult with at least two people. And they have the youth worker and the children's worker that they're getting rid of by telling them they are out of work on the end of the month. In 2010, General Synod voted for more support for children and young people, not for deletion. Synod would not support this betrayal, and the powers that be know it, so they're trying to get it done before Synod meet in February. They don't want this matter debated. They don't want you to discuss it, and they don't want Synod to debate it, the powers that be. They're slipping it through the Board of Education in the break for coffee. Diocesan workers are up in arms about it. Their own work with children and young people will suffer drastically because of these cuts. They won't have the support that these two workers give them. Many are seeking support to stop this dreadful move by even appealing to their diocesan bishops. Good luck, I say, with that one. Well done, Church House, and well done, Archbishops. This imitation of right-wing economic policy decisions, this total lack of any meaningful consultation, well, they show the young people of England your true commitment to them. You have managed to turn your policy round in less than 12 months and reduce the support to the youth of England, not increase it. So, you have truly done a cleggy. Bye-bye for now.